Hello and welcome to the Excellence Through Quality Improvement Equip Quick Quality Improvement Webinar Series. Today we're going to be talking about sustainability and spread, which is number eight. And I'm Debbie Bang. I'm the Director of Quality Improvement at Addiction and Mental Health Ontario and the co-lead on the Equip project with Michael Dunn. So we're going to uh, review what Equip is and the model for improvement. And then we're going to spend some time talking about sustainability, common mistakes, how to plan for sustainability. I'll walk you through the sustainability planner and introduce you to the Health Quality Ontario spread planner. All right. So as many of you will know, uh, Equip or Excellence for Quality Improvement is a partnership initiative between Addictions and Mental Health Ontario, Canadian Mental Health Association Ontario, and Health Quality Ontario. And it really is about helping community mental health and addiction sector to do quality improvement on a regular basis, to continue to provide the excellent quality care and person-centered care that is already available to families and individuals, and to help increase the support and the capacity for our agencies across Ontario to be able to do this. Quality improvement, of course, is a systematic approach to making changes that lead to better health outcomes specifically for clients to enhance the service and the system, and then also for professional development. Quality improvement includes all of us, so we all need to be involved in identifying how a service can be improved and also figuring out how best to do that. So healthcare professionals, clients and their families, researchers, planners and education, educationers, sorry, educators. So this is a nice diagram that sort of puts it all in context in terms of how you might achieve a quality improvement uh, culture. So in the middle is the domains of quality, which are equitable and integrated, timely, client-centered, effective, and safe. And we're all working towards the quadruple aim, which is better health for the population in Ontario, for individuals, uh, cost-effective, as well as improved provider satisfaction, as well as for the clients to be satisfied with the services that they're receiving. At Equip, we use the model for improvement to be in to do that, and I'm going to talk some more about that. So this actually is the model of improvement, and you, in the earlier webinars, you would have gone through each of these different stages. Today, we're going to be working on the very last stage, which is the spread and sustainability section, and I'll specifically talk about some tools that will be helpful for you when working through that. This is a project charter, which many of you will be familiar with, there isn't really a, a, a space for sustainability and spread, but it does fit a bit under the barriers and the mitigating strategies when you're trying to keep your project going. So sustainability and spread, what do we need to continue to do and who else would benefit from hearing about our learnings? So these are sort of two things that commonly happen with uh, sustainability. So we spend a great deal of time doing a quality improvement project. We're all gung-ho. We get uh, to the end and we have this improvement evaporation effect because we don't have in place an infrastructure that supports us continuing to do that new improved change that we've implemented. The other piece that sometimes happens is the island of improvement effect, which is that we know all about what it is we learn, but nobody else who could benefit from it has heard about it. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about today as well. So sustainability is about holding the gains, and there's specific things that assist us to do that. A supportive management structure, structuring so the, you have airproof change. So sometimes that means if you've implemented a new form, the old form is completely destroyed. It's not used for scrap paper, it's not left in the storeroom, it's gone, it's left, it's left the building. Robust, transparent feedback systems so we know whether or not we're continuing to do the change. A shared sense of the organizational system that is to be improved. Everyone is on side, everybody knows what we're working towards. Culture of improvement and a deeply engaged staff. Staff need to be involved from the onset, from the point of which they identify the problem, to working to improvement, to coming up with ideas, to testing those ideas, and of course sustaining and being able to brag about those outcomes. And then a formal capacity building program. Services don't are not static, we have new people that come. We have new people who are returning from maternity leaves and other leaves, and so we need them to know we're not doing it the old way anymore. So sustainability usually involves a standardization. So now that we've got this change, this is the way we're going to do it every time with every client. We document, and that includes any associated policies, the procedures clearly articulated in writing, there's protocols and guidelines. 
We have a system in place to measure and review that this is continuing to go as we have planned. And we might periodically look at whether or not that we're still getting the same outcomes. And of course, that piece around training and education of staff. New people come along, people are returning, people are switching jobs. They need to know exactly what it is that we're doing and why it is we do it in this order. So engaged leaders are a pretty important part of this. The clinical as well as the administrative leaders, were they on side with this change? Were they involved in the process? Were they engaged in actually working through the quality initiative? Supportive and frontline staff, if this is done without their involvement, one might guess that they might not be too keen to be involved in, in, the, uh, in the change that you're implementing. So were they involved in the early phases? Did they help identify the problem and think, think about how to test new ways of doing things? Were they involved in monitoring the improvement at the mid stage? And as you get to the end of the project, were they, were they involved in figuring out what the training needs would be, involved in helping train new people so that everyone knows what it is we're doing and how it is we're doing it now? We also need to communicate the benefits of the improved process. And this is about talking not only to our patients and our providers and our board, but those that might benefit from knowing that we've made this change. So our colleagues, people that we work with closely, like services across the province. And then we have to ensure the change is ready to be implemented. And this is a, a really important piece. And have, have we finished testing? Have we really given it a good go with our PDSA, which was um, another webinar that you could listen to? Have we, have we fully gone through the PDSA ramp and made sure that we've tweaked it, we've tried it in every, every opportunity, we've tried it with every kind of client, most of the team are on side with this, we've really tested it well, and we're ready to, uh, to implement this fully. And it's now is the way things are going to be done. And then we need to embed the improvement process. So the goal is, is to, to link this to our strategic direction. Everything works better when it's linked to the strategic direction. And if we have um, an intention to do something and this new change fits very well with that strategic direction, it's a win-win situation. We also need to consider that if things were to change, if funding were to change, if we had an influx of clients in a particular area, would, would this new change that we've implemented, is it flexible enough to be adapted to those, those coming changes? So something to think about along the process. And then the ongoing measurement. So not only who is going to be the point person for continuing to monitor whether or not we are doing it the way we say we are doing it now, but more importantly, are we, are we communicating um, the results, the outcomes that we're getting, to the people who need to know so they can help make a change. So do the frontline team know that this change that's been implemented is working the way we expect it to, six months out, 12 months out, 18 months out, three years out, do the board know that this change has happened and that these are the outcomes that we're getting? So building in a way to report back. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, it may be annually or quarterly, but do we have that in place? And then we need to hardwire these changes. So the, this is a, a really key place to making sure that it continues. So have we tested in a variety of conditions? Are the majority of the staff involved? And were they able to give feedback as to whether they felt it was working? Is the improvement clearly evident in your run charts? So that's an earlier slide. It's, it's uh, webinar number five, if you want to look back at run charts. Did When we implemented the change, did we continue to get the outcomes that we were expecting? Was there, was there a, a run that looked like, and, and a sustained run that suggested that this was the right way to do things? Have all the staff and all the shifts been trained? And think also about those staff coming back from leaves, those staff that are joining your organization. And are the necessary equipment and supplies in place and easy to get to? If I've got to walk, you know, uh, for a minute to get the form that I need, it's not in the right place. Do we have a set of measures which help us identify over time that this change is the right one and that what we have done is giving us the outcomes that we're expecting? And do our senior leaders know all about it? If it doesn't go the way we want to, do we have somebody, a key person, who's going to be able to identify that in a timely way and report that to the to the people that need to know so that changes can be made? And has it become our standard work, the way that we do it every time with every person? 
So I wanted to introduce you to the National Health Services uh, Sustainability Guide, a really nice tool. It's the, uh, the link is here on your screen and you're welcome to have a look at that, but I'll go through it in a little more detail for you. So the, the key piece about this sustainability guide is it has several places where it's very important to use it. And it really has um, a place as you're beginning in the very first stages of your, of your planning, your quality improvement project, because there will be some key things that might need to be put into place in order for your changes to be successful. It might mean that you need to order something or you need to change a, a flow or or you need to uh, implement um, a, different, a, a different kind of software or a way of recording. It's really helpful to know those things up front so you can begin the process of getting them in place. Some things take longer to put into place than others. Did you have a chance to look at the sustainability when you were doing your first pilot testing, your PDSA work? And then after you've done your improvement, to ensure the sustainability is continued, it's often a good idea to look at this guide one more time. So the guide specifically thinks about um, metrics from an organization, a staff, and a process perspective. From an organization perspective, it, it helps you to think about your infrastructure and your fit of this change with your strategic direction and, and or your culture. From a staff perspective, do you have clinical as well as senior leadership on side? Are staff involved in uh, identifying the problem but also sustaining the change? And from a process perspective, is it effective? Is it credible evidence that you're gathering to ensure it's effective? Is it adaptable if things change? And are there benefits beyond just the client? So if the client is the only one who benefits, but it's a lot more work for the frontline staff, that's not a change that's likely to be sustained. So this is what it looks like. I don't have quite a, as pretty a one uh, to show you in the example, but on the left-hand side is, is the, is the three metrics, the process, the staff, and the organization. And there's a series of scores and questions that you would ask yourself and then you would score yourself. And then it produces this lovely table on the right-hand side. Uh, and the two different bars, you perhaps can't see the, the lighter gray one as well. That's the organization score. And then the, the darker colors, the green, the red, and the pink are the, the standard scores. So the maximum score that you could get. So let's just think about that tool just for one more minute before I go on and show you an example. Part of the reason the sustainability guide is so helpful is it helps you to look at your low scores, the areas where you need to focus your attention and you're most likely to get the most impact for ensuring that you sustain your change. It's very practical, the guide. It gives you lots of ideas to try. It creates a visual picture that everyone can see. It's inclusive because you get to hear from, from all of your colleagues. Each of the team members fill this out. It's doable. It's very simple to, to do. It has a balanced approach. It can be tailored to different audiences. So it's, it's usable by family members as well as by your, by your senior leaders. It has a forward thinking in that it wants you to connect your change idea with your or your your uh, change that you've done with your strategic plan. It fits with your organization and there's some real practical examples. So you may remember the example of the Live Well Recovery Service. Again, it's it's a it's a, a program that's offered in three different sites in a in Ontario town with a population of about a hundred thousand. There's a city center area, there's a suburban and a rural community, and they've had a long-standing problem with wait time into the intensive case management program. Specifically, 108 days from the point of referral to getting service initiation. They have a data software management system, and what they're counting is from the moment at which a provider or a community partner or a family member makes that first contact with Live Well Recovery Services to the point at which the individual gets that assessment that they have requested. So here is uh, the sustainability guide and you can see there's two colors on this page. One is a gray, which is the maximum score you could get on this particular item. And the blue is the survey or the uh, Live Well uh, Recovery Service score. And this is, this is a, um, a accumulation of all the different people that scored the tool. You can see under staff behavior towards sustaining the change in the middle of the chart and also the bottom benefits beyond helping your patient, those, the gray and the blue bar are exactly equal, which suggests that you've got the maximum score on those and those are two areas of strength. You can see under clinical leadership engagement, senior leadership engagement, there's a big difference between the gray bar, which is the maximum score, and the blue bar, which is what the service actually scored itself. That might be an area to focus on. 
are your clinical and your senior leaders really engaged with this process? You also can see in the infrastructure for sustainability, the first item, there's a big difference between those two bars. So this helps the organization to think about if we're going to sustain this change, these are some areas that we need to put some more effort in, whether it's training, people better understanding, people feeling more aware of what the change is and, and having an opportunity to think some more about it. So a really nice pictorial of what it is your strengths are and areas that you might improve. So the last area I want to speak about is spread. And spread, um, you know, we can think about it in a different way, but, but how do we talk about what it is we did and what we learned? We need to think about the groups who would benefit from learning about our, our change and how, what's the best way to reach them. So ultimately, we've started in the bottom left-hand corner with developing a change. We've predicted what we think might happen. We've gone ahead and tested that change using a PDSA cycle. We now have what we think is the right thing to do. We've seen that it's holding um, exactly the results that we're expecting in our run chart, and now we're going to implement it. So who is it that we need to spread? Who is it that needs to know about this? Is it within our own, own organization? We need to spread it to our other office or another area. You remember with the Living Well, there were three offices. We might have done the quality improvement pro project in one office and now want to spread it to two others. But the other is this is an opportunity to let colleagues, whether they're three kilometers away or through 100 kilometers away, know about what you've learned because it saves them from having to reinvent the wheel. And it's a really lovely opportunity for you to do a little bit of bragging about something that you've done well. So this is one of the tools that we would highly recommend. It's about a five page um, document and we can get you connected with that. It's from Health Quality Ontario and it's called their Spread Planner. Specifically, it looks at four key areas or four steps. So you wanna clarify what it is you wanna spread, what you want people to know about your experience, how are you going to spread that information? Are you presenting at a conference? Are you uh, hosting a, a webinar or a telephone call? Are you bringing together a group of people who you know would benefit from knowing about this through a community of practice kind of format? Identify and confirm the resources that you need in order to do that to make sure they understand what it is you've done, whether that's a PowerPoint presentation or a visit to your organization, and then figure out how you're going to communicate that. This is a great opportunity for you to be able to save someone else some time and ultimately for the client to have a better experience. So just to summarize, <clears throat> the, the quick webinars have assisted you to go through each of these different stages for the model of improvement. We've just spoken about sustainability and spread and I've offered uh, you the NHL sustain sustainability tool that you can use in your own organization. At the initial point, midpoint and also at the end and also the health quality Ontario spread planner so lastly this is information about our equip team uh, please feel free to contact any of us we would love to hear whether this webinar was helpful or useful for you if there's er some areas that you'd like some more clarity or that we could any ways that we could make it better and if you're not on our mailing list uh, please think about doing that thank you for listening <laughs>